do some blending on this dresser and wanted to uh, take you along for the ride. I'm just going to finish the front out. I don't have the dresser on wheels right now because it's really heavy and the wheels weren't acting very nice. So I wanted to just, uh, I'll just do the front. I actually have done these three. It's really subtle. You can't see it that well, but uh, I do plan on coming back with a glaze, a dark glaze, almost like if you were dark waxing it too, and really pop these details out. So I'm keeping the, the blending subtle and I think the details are going to be in the glazing and really popping out a lot of this here. I might even come in with some gilding wax. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to wait to see how I'm going to polish the hardware tonight. If the hardware polishes up like a bronze copper, I might come back and put some metallic on here to really accent the hardware. But the hardware on this thing is thick. It's heavy. This is really a legit, um, well-made French provincial dresser. There are drawers that go on the inside, but I'm probably going to do them differently. They're, they're not in there right now. So join me as I go across the side. I've got uh, several tools, if you will, going on here. I've got a Dixie bow brush, I have a Klingon brush. I even have a Purdy brush. I'm missing, somehow or another, I lost my Paint Pixie um, natural bristle brush. So I'm using this for my blending. It's doing pretty good. It's really a nice brush, it's a quality brush. If I have to, I'll pull out my Dixie Bell Mini and do some blending with that. I have three colors of paint. I have the base of this is manatee gray. I'm using driftwood for a highlight. And I'm actually even using sea glass to bring out the middle lighter area instead of like white or cotton. I just really like that uh, feeling. I think it's going to help make it even look more antique with that green in there. So it might be a little tough to see on the video camera with the lights and all, but I think you'll see it a little bit more on the doors. But hopefully you can benefit from this. Another thing I have is this is a weird can I got at Hobby Lobby because I was looking for a sprayer. One of these days I'll get one of the misters, but this one works pretty well. I'd say it's a little high tech for most people because it's compressed. I, I actually use my compressor to push air into it. It's a, it says I can spray any kind of liquid, kind of, and I haven't done that yet, but I'd love to spray paint some things with this. But this is what I'm using for my mister. I have a bucket of water just to kind of rinse my brushes and uh, keep them kind of moist and clean as I go with a towel and some rags to make it work. Sometimes I'll wear gloves with this because they get really messy, but so far I'm doing okay. And, um, I mean, even got some inspiration from Brandy and put some padding on a little cart so I can roll around. I have a cart that's a little higher than this, but this thing is so low and I don't have any kind of raised surface, so this cart's working out pretty good. So thanks, Brandy, for the wonderful idea if you're listening. So first thing that you want to do when you're blending, or at least that I like to do, is just wet the surface down, just give it a nice little mist. Because you want to keep this paint wet you don't want to do any dry brushing, at least not at this point. So when you work, work in sections, you need a plan, you need to practice, or at least maybe do a demonstration on an old cabinet door. If you feel like you are not comfortable with where you're going on this. But uh, the beauty of chalk paint, and as you may have heard me say, that if you mess up, let it dry, put a fan on it, blow dry it, paint over it. Say that because I've already done that on this project. So just work in little sections because you don't need it drying faster. In fact, I even turned off my fan. I don't want this stuff drying faster than it should. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to set this down, switch to my Klingon brush, could be any kind of other brush. And all I want to do right now is work on the middles where I want the highlights to be. And I'm just laying some paint down. Hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, I don't really have my camera set up to take questions. But I'll try and look at those here in a little bit. Unfortunately, when you're blending, you don't really have a lot of time to stop. You need to work quickly. So, sorry I'm not really interacting much with comments. I'm not sure who's watching, but I'll, I'll post this video. So you can see the difference with the three colors and none. 
while we're doing this, I'm actually, this is actually being my second coat. So there's a lot of things happening on this coat, and that is my second coat. I'm getting the paint put down so I can work wet. A little bit of water. Uh, the thing I'm sure the mister will work better is it doesn't um, shoot paint out. I do have a squirt bottle, but those are not as reliable. You can't really control how much you squirt out. It's almost spinning. I don't really want that. After I get this panel done, I'll look to see if there's any questions. But maybe you know somebody who's wanting to blend and they could use a little extra video help. Feel free to maybe have a watch party with them or copy the link. Tell them to get on and take a look. So I'll use a rag to get some paint off this brush. How much paint to put down. This is where the uh, practice works. I'm going to put that brush in the water while I'm blending. Wipe off my brush. Like I said, this uh, pretty brush, they're, they're probably close to, let me say they're high, higher end brushes. They're not cheap. But if you take care of them, they'll do a good job for you. I use them for even applying top cuts sometimes because they're just so nice. Sometimes those light colors might get where you don't want them, so I'll come back and just go back over with my main base color. So maybe you can see the difference now. It's very subtle. I don't want this thing to be as bold as some other pieces we might do, just because I want I want this to be a very classy piece, and I, I think it'll have a wider market where you might want to buy it. So I'll keep moving across. Please feel free to send me a message, say hey, or let me know if you have any comments or questions. Maybe you have a piece coming up you're trying this on. Right now I'm using the Dixie Bell um, oval. Not oval. It's always the right word. I do you like how flexible it is? The bristles are nice and long. Dixie Bell paint is perfect in my opinion for blending, at least from all the paints that I've ever tried. Plenty of paints out there, but I really feel like they've, they've got figured out how to these paints to work together. So, as I did on the other side, I'll stop there and I have this brush in water so I can just you don't want to build up your paint too much on this brush, you're applying the second and third color. If you wanted to go bolder with this, you could probably do a white and it would really pop more, but I don't want that effect so much. I just really want it to be subtle, so I'm not putting a lot of paint. You're almost just applying, you're not even painting, because with this brush, now I'm just kind of feathering it all in together, creating a nice highlight. If you wanted to, you could blend the first color you put down and then come back and blend the second color and you go different directions. And now with the first brush, I'm just cleaning it up. And it's going to take on different appearances as it dries, so sometimes you just need to trust it. If you're not sure how it's going to dry, you might just do a section and then let it dry before you say, okay, I'm doing the whole piece that way. So,
right? So there's a first color that's driftwood, now I'm putting sea glass on there. Put as much as you feel like you need to highlight. Now, to blend. So those two panels are done. Keep sliding down here. And my goal is to get the front done. Later on, I'll do the sides and the top. So a little, a little water. While I'm doing this first coat, I'm actually still technically putting the second coat on to get rid of all the brush strokes from the first coat. this color to go all the way across. I just want it to be towards the middle. So if I get too far, I'll just come back in a minute. With your chalk paintbrush, you should be able to still do some grunt blending. See glass. Spread it out a little bit. Now, and it's okay to go back and forth, up and down. You're trying to blend that in to the other grays that are there. Just make sure when you're done, you get a nice horizontal feather. So it could be a good little intervention here. You could miss this some more. It's actually getting a little dry. Hopefully this is coming through okay on camera. Whatever you do, you don't really want the blending brush to get wet. That's not the brush you don't want wet. It just makes it streaky. That's the, the feathering really works well when it's not too wet. So I'm just fine tuning right now. Here we go. Cycle. This paint just does not work, doesn't stay wet long enough to do more than that much. On this one, I'm actually going to wet it down, wet it down more before I put the other colors on. Make sure that when you're done putting that first coat on, it's a little wet. So that should happen.
The nice thing about Paint Pixie's brush is that it doesn't, it, it's in a, a oval, which means that ends are rounded. Where this one, because it's a flat, the ends oft, it oftentimes can leave more of a pointed end, and I don't really like that. But it's doing okay. Just having to work it a little harder than I normally would with the more natural bristle brush. But I think this to keep this subtle is really critical. Sometimes I feel like I can take a bolder approach with I'm gonna say a less significant piece maybe, but this one's just so nice and I don't want the paint finish to be louder than the details of the piece. That if you understand that it's sometimes I think the piece has enough character that furniture artists we just get in the way, so I don't want to get in the way too much of this one. That's why I feel like it needs the glaze to um, accentuate the details on the piece. So people talk about letting the piece speak to you. Well, sometimes that's, it's so true because now, of course, sometimes you see a piece and the last 20 pieces you've seen maybe on Instagram or Pinterest that impress you that you want to try it and this is the one to try it on, but you can't just say, I want to paint it pink. You have to have more vision than that, like pink with distressing, pink with glazing, pink with blending, pink with all the above, so that you put your touch on it, it's original, Try different combinations than what you've seen, maybe. Like on this piece, I could have gone, instead of teal, I could have gone pink. Gone with more of a rose look. Could have gone lighter. But this is one of those things where you hope, based on experience, that Trust your gut that it's going to all work out. You've done enough of them or you've seen enough of them to know that dark glazing is going to be okay on this. I was about to touch that one, but once you, once you step away and start drying, you really can't go back because you'll just start messing it up. If it doesn't work out or something's not quite right, it's best to let it dry and come back and paint, paint over it. All right, so the next uh, spot left on this project is across the very bottom. And so that's gonna be fun. Probably what I'll do is the left section and then the right section. So let me set it down. There's no way to really support it too well, not with what I have, so I need to keep it on the ground. Okay, so first coat's on. I don't have to put a lot of paint down because I've already painted it once. So I'm just really putting paint down so I have something to blend to. Next, let's get out our driftwood. And all I want to do is focus in the middles. I don't want paint everywhere because that's where I'm going to put glazing. So just, just highlights here and there. These, what I'm doing right here, because I know I'm going to do something on these, I just want to get some paint almost behind it. We'll do the same thing with teal, just a touch, a little much. Okay. 
get around it, not necessarily in it. All right, that's enough to blend. This is where a nice natural round would work because it's a small spot. I'm just going to kind of swivel this around. If you get too much brush, too much paint. Okay. I'll come back with my original color and just kind of clean up areas that I don't want teal. Such a big blending brush. going to work enough. Just trying to keep the highlights within the, the two decorations. Putting some of the original color back in this spot. Okay, so let's finish this up. We'll do the very bottom. First thing is water. This color went on so nicely in the first coat that I really don't have to do much of a second coat to cover. That makes the amount of paint you use much less. I actually opened a brand new can of uh, Manatee Gray or bottle and I started this project and I'm about out so I'll, I'll barely go into two cans of paint for this project which is actually quite good. I'll need to do the sides, I'll do the sides in the off camera but I almost got an entire container on just one. And this is a pretty good sized dresser. This is this is a no joke when you kind of dresser like 70 something inches. Usually you're talking about 60 something with most of your dressers. This one's like 74 or 72 inches. It's, it's legit. You better get a moving truck to get this home or a big. Fortunately, I have a trailer, but it's big. Paid a decent amount for it, not much more than I normally would. But the payoff should be much better because it's quality, it's size. Um, unfortunately, not everybody always sees the, the all those. <laughs> points when they want to buy it. They're like, oh, can I get you down a little bit? Is the price negotiable? Like, you know what you're buying, right? Okay. All right. Well, hopefully you uh, enjoyed the video today. Learned a little bit. When you're having fun with your projects. Let me know if you watched. Maybe if you have any questions. And I'll definitely be posting pics before you know it. Uh, how it turned out. But um, check my hand out. So hopefully that was good for you. I really enjoyed the process. Looking forward to finishing it out. And so probably by the end of the day I'll have it all blended. And then throughout the week, I'll finish some things up, see how the hard work turns out. I'm going to do the top as well. But um, thanks for joining me, and uh, have a great weekend. And don't forget to uh, have fun with some projects you've got going on. Let me know if I can help you in any way. Have a good day.
that's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.